love BC. How old is it? Because I, I, it started as a blog, right? It, you know, it started as an experiment. <laughs> I, you know, back in the mid '90s, around yep. the time that it became possible to build websites, I uh, created a website to sell books. And you know, at the time, you know, and that was really just to learn about e-commerce. So e-commerce was emerging, and I wanted to be able to better advise my clients on how they could use the web to engage in transactions, sell things. And um, so I created this book site really just to learn how to sell things. And uh, it that's how Amazon started. That's how Jeff Bezos, that's his story you know, too. Yeah, Isn't that the Jeff, craziest thing? Well, it, it speaks to a wide variety of things. Um, you know, Jeff Bezos bookstore was a whole nother thing. It, it, um, you know, he's funded by the capital markets and was able to, for example, sell books at, at, at a loss until he became a monopoly. I mean, so Wall Street recognized that he was an emerging monopoly and funded that effort because they knew it would be quite profitable and it turned out to be true. So meanwhile, you know, I'm selling books and really not even making enough money to make a living selling books. You know, I, I when I started this site, it just became a passion because I was just so um, happy to discover all the great authors and meet people like you and 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 just it opened up a world of literature to me. So I, I wasn't an avid reader. People always say, oh, you were an avid reader and you started a website. No, I, I started a website because I was, you know, into building websites and the 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 books was what got me excited, you know. You know, it's discovering, you know, literature like, I don't know, uh, the literature from the Harlem Renaissance and people like Jane Toomer, for example, and reading that book, Cain, which was the first book on our book club's reading list. Oh, was it? Yeah. And I never read anything like that before. I just didn't know you could put words together like that. It just, and, um, you know, or discovering uh, people like John Henry Clark, Dr. John Henry Clark, mm -hmm. you know. I didn't know who he was. I mean, he's right there in Harlem where I grew up and teaching people about black history. And, you know, it, again, the ideas were new to me, you know, and, and it wasn't as if I was uneducated. It wasn't as if I was a dummy. I just was ignorant. And but, that, um, but that's how we, but that's all our stories though, right? Because if you come to the education system, they're not putting, I mean, now you get a little bit more black books, but when we were, cause we were around the same age, we were coming up, you know, you didn't get black books. I mean, if you got a black book, it was, it was like Uncle Tom's Cabin kind of stuff. Like you didn't get. Right. No, it, it was nothing. You didn't get those books. Right. It, it what they weren't. They weren't books that interest people in reading. So a lot of times I hear, well, you know, black boys don't read, black men don't read. Yeah. Part of the reason is that there's nothing that they're interested in reading. There's nothing that speaks to them. And so if you're not exposed to anything that would interest you, why would you read? Um, so, it, you know, it, it feeds in on itself. So in other words, if I was aware of some of the things that, you know, I became aware of as an adult, much younger, who knows what the world could have been like or what my perspective would have been or not just mine, but the community I grew up in. You know, how would people be navigating the world differently, you know, um, when they are given a set of tools and information and knowledge, it, it's, you know, I, I can't even imagine, you know. But so when did it, you know that this was something? Like, because, you know, you, you didn't, you, I mean, you didn't go into this because, as you said, um, you were su such an avid reader and you just had this whatever. So when did you know that like, oh, this is a thing with people, like people really are getting into this, they make their, they are frequenting this site and, I'm getting comments and people are like, hey, I like this. Well, I, because of those comments. So in other words, what, you know, I'm motive, I'm self-motivated. So I'm not, I'm not motivated by becoming rich or famous or, you know, what motivates me is sharing this information. And so when I, I mail a newsletter out most weeks. Yep, and I, I, will get, I got mine the other day. <laughs> right. And and if this is recorded in the next newsletter, there'll be a link to it. So I always um I always enjoy the comments that I get back from that newsletter. 
you know, someone who, you know, lets me know that, um, you know, they discovered a book that they weren't familiar with or their favorite author has a new book that they didn't know was coming out. You know, one of the things that I, I think is important about what I do is that I provide a platform for sharing information about books that wouldn't be widely shared otherwise. When I started, there were far more platforms. There were more bookstores, newspapers, magazines, websites. There were websites that I aspired to be like. But they're, you know, it's, 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 there are far fewer platforms celebrating and sharing information about our books. Um, so we need more AOBC. So when I knew it was a thing, I um, was just getting feedback from uh, visitors to the site and, and seeing things shared and, and seeing, you know, what resonates with people. You know, the, you know, that books, I have, I've been maintaining a list of Black-owned bookstores for the last 20 plus years. Yes. And yeah. uh, that went viral um, last summer. I mean, it, it generated a, a tremendous amount of traffic, which equates to revenue, on, you know, from my website. Uh, but, you know, for 20 years, no one cared about, or very few people cared about the list. And and last summer, it literally went viral. Everybody you know was copying. Why? Like what, uh, I mean, I mean, do you know why? Like what, what was yeah. the thing that made people like, I gotta know about these black bookstores? Well, what it was, it, you know, George Floyd was murdered mm -hmm. and but the majority people, mostly white people, in fact, were interested in purchasing books on anti-racism. Oh. So, and they, more importantly, they were interested in buying those books from black owned bookstores. So not only did the list go viral and was shared widely, I was watching uh, uh, Ibrahim Kendi's book, uh, How to Be an Anti-Racist. You know, I got a sale, you know, no problem. Got a sale the next day. Next day was five. The next day was 20. And I just didn't understand what was going on. And, and I didn't realize what was happening. So I went to Amazon and I saw that Amazon didn't have it in stock. And, and what Amazon does when they don't have something, what, what they do is then they throw it out to the third party marketers who then compete on price and they start raising the price for the book. So then I saw, oh, okay, the book is being overpriced on Amazon. So people are seeking alternative places to buy the book because I don't typically charge over retail for a book. Um, but then the book became unavailable. And, and, you know, and the demand was increasing while the book's availability was, 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 um, was really tight. Um, so that book, I sold more copies of that book um, in a week, you know, than I probably sold all books the prior week. You oh, know, wow. J June, June, I sold more books in June than I did the entire previous year. It was just unbelievable. Um, and so when the book became available again, then Amazon went back to their normal tactic of... Uh, <laughs> We got the so, books and I'm gonna mark it all the way down. Yeah, exactly. So they they were marking it down below my my wholesale cost. So I, you know, I, again, they have always had the wherewithal to do things like that. Um, and so I don't know how many sales they got on that book, but um, again, people were keenly interested in supporting black-owned bookstores. Yeah, that's and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, that saved um, probably a, a handful of stores. That yeah. that whole effort. Um, because it was unprecedented. There's, it was never a time where there was that much um, interest and support, active support of Black-owned bookstores. Never so when before. You, when you started this website, when you started this website, I mean, were you aware of Black, black bookstores or did this, this had to make you become aware of Black bookstores and, and pay attention to like where were the black bookstores and what are they doing and how they're doing business? Like, what did that do for you? Yeah, I mean, so once I got into that, the, the, the ecosystem of black books and um, so, yeah, of course, the, the stores were important. There was a, a store, Liberation Bookstore. Yes, um, in Harlem. Yeah. And so I used to I, get, I visited... get on a train and go, because I live in Connecticut. I still live in Connecticut. I'd get on a oh. train and go to Liberation Bookstore. Yeah. So, I mean, it, by the time I discovered it, it was, it wasn't, it was past its prime. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but the, I, but the idea that um, there were institutions like that in my community that I was unaware of 
uh, was a little disheartening. So I, I wanted to make sure that people were aware of bookstores in their community. Even though I sell books on the web, what I do on the web can't replace a quality local bookstore with mm -hmm. knowledgeable salespeople who are well-read, familiar with the books, and can help you discover some books that's going to help you or a book that you're going to enjoy. I mean, you know, that's that's the business of book selling. I survive on the web because I'm somewhat technical, um, you know, but, you know, survival on the web is a whole different thing than survive, you know, maintaining a physical brick and mortar bookstore. But I want to make sure people were aware of them. And um, again, feedback from readers of, you know, people saying, wow, I didn't know there was a bookstore just a few miles away from me. I mean, the, re the reality of it, most of us don't live anywhere near a, a independent bookstore. So many of the books that I sell on my site, just there's no place for someone to walk into a store and buy these books. Um, and so I supplement or attempt to supplement what, you know, physical bookstores provide. But um, yeah, we, you know, there's no, the, there's no black owned bookstore in Harlem, which is a shame. The, the Dang, closest, it's yeah, the, ridiculously crazy to. It, it is. But it you is. know what, I, if you believe that somebody will come along and say, you know what, we need a bookstore in Harlem. Yeah, so I, that said, there is one in Washington Heights, which is close, you know, mm -hmm. just on the border, you know, depending on who you talk to, some might suggest that it's in Harlem, but it's just north of Harlem called Sisters Uptown. Uh, they've been around for over two decades. And so that's a store that if you're in Harlem, you should be going to as an example. Um, so those stores, we need people to go into them, purchase books from them, because that's the way they, they, they thrive. So I thrive as a result of people like you, uh, readers coming to the site, purchasing books, engaging on the site, bringing me traffic, sharing information about the site. That's otherwise I will be gone. I mean, it, it should be, you would think in 2021, there will be a great number of uh, booksellers selling books on the web. And, but, you know, social media, since I've started, social media emerged and, you know, people are on Twitter and they're, they're not, they're not engaging on websites as much as not just book sites, but websites in general, they're, you know, social media sucked all the air out the room and, you know, they. So, so, um, so when you started, you, what you said earlier was, um, there were way more on site places for black books to be bought. What happened to those sites? Like what, what, what causes them to, you know, go away? Yeah. It's, there are a wide variety of factors, uh, but one of the, some of the primary ones includes that it's just exceedingly difficult to get attention on the web today, um, you know, for, for a wide variety of reasons. You know, so one of, you know, there's this company called Google that <laughs> has, you know, the employees are terrific. They want to do great things, but the leadership, you know, it, are, are, is doing things to really hurt the web. I argue that the web is a far less rich place today because of Google and the way they use their search engine. They control the discoverability of websites. They front run content. You know, they, they you know, so if you do a Google search today, it's, it's usually not necessary to visit the underlying website. So, you know, Next time you're on, if you next time you go to Google or maybe even any search engine, but Google is far and away the most dominant one, so they they're the one that matters. So if you go in to Google and do a search, maybe it's on books. You know, you look at for African American literature. Google will throw up all their website right on the search engine results page. So they'll list books. They'll scrape content from Wikipedia. They'll put a description of the author in their books. They'll take pictures from sites like mine and create this whole like web presence for information on books. And you, you don't necessarily have to go to a website. If you're looking for a restaurant, you know, you click, you do a search on a restaurant, Google put all this information and you actually have to hunt for the website's address, you know, because Google puts all the information right there. Because they when don't started, want you to leave their 
You don't want they, them to leave them. They want to do everything for you. They they want to do everything for you. Now the and and serve ads. I mean, you know, they want to do everything. They want to make money, which is the bottom line. Uh, and they do that primarily through advertising. So again, if you for really popular search terms, you do that search on Google. And you'll, you know, above the fold before, you, you know, you have to scroll to see organic search results because they got their ads, their content, and, you know, the websites are buried. Now, that has made it very difficult to websites to get traffic. In the old days, Google would just give you, you see the little search box, enter your query, and you get a list of websites. doesn't happen anymore. It's, it's ads and their content. Um, that's one factor, and it's a big one. Uh, another one is the way Google search works. They discourage webmasters from linking to other websites. So, you know, it's called the World Wide Web for a reason because you go to a site and you can link to multiple other sites. And that's how websites used to be discovered. But now, um, Google, if you link to a bad site or what Google deems to be a bad site, um, you you know, you'll hurt your site in search. So now when someone does a search and a search that your site should come up in, you're just very so far that people will never discover you. So that's one of the reasons. So it's hard to get discovered. Today, if you, you know, if I was to start my site today, I would struggle. Mm. You know, today you need a boatload of money and app to, add, to advertise and, and just to be recognized. You know, a lot of times I, I, I'll meet someone who's an avid reader who's on the web and they'll say, oh, I never heard of his site. And, you know, and, and that, that's, I find that surprising because if you're, if you're yeah. active on the web and you look for things, you, my website should come up frequently. It should, it should just be, you know, you can't escape it. Uh, but today um, it is easy to miss websites like mine because of the, the way Google has, perverted its search engine. So that that's a big one. That's that's a big one. It's it's just exceedingly difficult to be discovered. And and we um often use social media in an effort to become discovered. And platforms like Facebook, for example, have told brands like AOBC, I don't care how much effort you put into uh, building a fan base, we're not going to let you access them unless you pay us. And, and and that's what they said in so many words. They made it, they made it they were transparent about that. Um, so, you know, my fan base went like this, but my engagement went like this. It went so low that I just stopped using it, really. I just, I post links periodically, but there's no engagement on those links because Google's not, I mean, Facebook's not showing them to people. And Twitter's similar. You know, so the, the things that social media promote aren't the things that I'm trying to promote. So if it's scandalous, if it's controversial, if it's salacious, if it's celebrity driven, you know, a celebrity can go and post almost anything. A Donald Trump can post anything. It's going to get shown and shared. And, you know, I argue that Twitter helped elevate uh, Trump's uh, visibility. Oh, it did. And, and, no uh, question. Yeah. And but, you know, so at the, while they're elevating Trump's Trump people like people and celebrities, did marginalizing and depressing, you know, sites like, you know, book sites, black independent book sites. So, you know, it's, so again, it goes back to the people I need people to, you know, yeah. yeah. So it's you all that keep AOBC alive. It's not, you know, I survived um, despite Twitter, despite Google, despite Amazon, the, you know, it's there's, there's just so many things, and I didn't even mention Amazon in terms of, you know, if I sell Bar uh, Barack Obama's book at retail, which I have to because you know I, I can't afford to lose money on book sales. It's hard for me to tell a reader, you know what? Don't take that seventy percent discount from or sixty percent discount from Amazon. Go, you know, buy from Amazon, or, or you know, if they're willing to take a loss on the book or can do it take advantage of it. But what the reality is many books are is is actually you're actually better off buying them from me than you would be for Amazon 
you know, so they famously discount really popular books and I sell them at full retail. But, you know, I don't charge sales tax on most people because I only have one state of where, I, where I work out of. So unless you buy books out from that state, I'm not gonna charge you sales tax. I always ship books um, UPS uh, two, three day or uh, priority mail. So in many cases, you'll get the books in two days. That's not always guaranteed because the post office has been has been rough lately. lately yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> um, yeah. Right. So it's not uncommon for a, a person to come to the site, buy a book. If they spend over 75, the shipping will be free, but and they'll get the books, you know, that's you know, within two or three business days. Uh, so it's it's a it's, it's not as if the, the sort of there's a value proposition there um, that you know Amazon may or may not offer. Now, many books that Amazon sells now are through third parties. They're not they're not books that are shipped um, from Amazon. And in addition, I sell books that Amazon simply doesn't have. You right. Know, or, yeah. So we you know on, on my website you know there's a book that I wrote the introduction to. Um, it was a, a reprint of the uh, New Negro and um, from the Harlem Renaissance period. And, um, you know, I'm the only one that's selling that book. So we, there's increased effort by publishers, indie publishers, to keep Amazon out of our pockets, you know, to kind of control um, how books are sold and distributed. And, and there's an increased interest from readers to support indie booksellers. So it wasn't just you know, the, the white people trying to buy anti-racist books, there's a, a an increased level of consciousness by everyday readers. One of my biggest supporters is Go On Girl Book Club. Mm -hmm. They have made a conscious decision. And Go On Girl Book Club is a book club that has uh, scores of chapters, hundreds of members across the country. And they um, have made a conscious effort to support AOBC. So, you know, and, and in turn, what I do is make it easy for their members to buy the books on their reading list. So every six months they could click a link, a one buy link, get all the books, no sales tax, no, you know, free shipping and half of the profit. So every six months, all of the money that I make from their books on their list, I look at the profit, cut it in half and contribute that to their um, um, scholarship fund. Wow. So, yeah, so that that's been working out well. Incredible. And um, it's win win. And everyone benefits. I mean, it the, the scholarship recipients benefit, the readers benefit, AOBC benefits, and, and so it's not and then the people who come to the site benefit because of Go On Girls business, I can afford to do things that I might not otherwise have, you know, I exist. You know, my very existence is because of them. Mm -hmm. You know, not just them alone, but but other almost, book clubs and other similar other similarly minded people. And, okay. Exactly. So, again, the, the idea is that if you want more, and I'm one website, so I have my own sensibility and how I present information and the books that I choose. So we need more, not less. We need more, and Al Amazon's algorithm is. Is, is motivated by revenue, you know, it's, and it's, they execute brilliantly. I mean, I just am amazed by what they have been able to do. Um, not that I like everything that they've done. Um, they're like an evil mastermind. You kind of sit back and like, wow, look, I can't believe they were able to do that. They're able to, you know, keep the government at bay, create multiple monopolies across all kinds of domains and become a, you know, have over a million employees and become, you know, make the owner the richest person on earth ever, maybe since, you know, even richer than Mansa Musa. I don't know. It's just unbelievable. I it mean, he makes, he makes Rockefeller and, and the Fords and the Carnegie's look like paupers. Mm -hmm. We don't really appreciate how wealthy this guy is. Um, no, and he's stepping down, right? Stepping down. No, it, that, I think that's. Um, I don't know. He, he's not relinquishing control of Amazon. He is. His net worth will continue to 
grow yeah. and he'll exert control over that company you know probably forever i mean it takes a certain type of uh, personality to uh run that kind of company and do the things that he's done um you know many of us would probably be quite happy to have a great company do some really great things in the community nah i'm just interested in making as much money as possible that's that's what he does and he's been great at it you know yeah and, and he's not so, penalized for it yeah no and um and and i was you know again i always argue that collectively we not just black people but collectively we we're, we're less well off you know there are people who tell me oh there are no good books out there what are you talking about oh my there? god people say yeah. that to you yeah i mean they're just that is <laughs> not that is not an uncommon refrain I just can't find any good books. What? <laughs> yeah. So in 2021, that's that's a remarkable statement. Given that, so similarly, I mean, if you think about how much access we, all right, like you said, we're the same age. So when I was in college, you want to know something, you had to go to the library, you had to know yes. how to look, you had to know yeah. how to use card catalog, you had to know what systems to access. Yes. Today you. You know, you whip out your cell phone and you say, hey, so-and-so, give me uh, where's what. But the problem is, even though we have so much access to information, we, we're less informed. Yeah. And people can look at, have access to information and come away with completely divergent, mutually exclusive viewpoints on the same, the same thing. And it's, yes. it just boggles. Well, I know why. <laughs> We know, well, it's, you know, th these companies are extremely skilled at manipulating people, getting them engaged. They're not interested in informing them, they're interested in keeping them engaged. And so they understand psychometrically how to manipulate people and they, and they do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the whole idea of people, you know, doing this on the subway and not really even thinking about what, you know, it, it's, it's almost like brainwashing. We've been kind of. Oh, it's not like it is. I yeah. mean, it is. So, yeah. so talk to me about how you've been able to gauge what was needed around um, black books and the and the selling of black books. Because now you, you've uh, you've engaged authors to come on and talk about their books, right? You've uh, you have reviews. You put out a um, a, a, a a list of popular black books or books that are launching um uh, you know that rivals i think the new york times bestsellers list right like i think your list rivals that i i was you know i still run the inner city newspaper and um, periodically i would run your list in my paper because i just thought it was the the most comprehensive and the most badass list of black books anywhere i couldn't run that list like i couldn't i couldn't on my own create that so i would just run your <laughs> No, I pre well, listen, anytime you share something of mine, please let me know. I do. Well, I have. I haven't in a while, uh, but but yeah. Uh, See, like we have it up now. Like we have your stuff up now. In our that was a mistake. I don't know what I just, I moved my coffee cup and hit a button. All right. So let me get back to, holy cow. What did I do? Oh, I don't think you did it. I think, uh, I think uh, my producer, oh, is that you? Cause I thought no, I'm not doing anything. Doing yeah, I no, guess that's that... my that's my producer doing. Oh, okay. Harry, Harry is doing it because I I sent him the link this morning. So, okay, yeah. great. So, so you have yeah. author profiles. I mean, I mean, you you you. This is not just I'm gonna put up a bunch of authors or I'm gonna put up a bunch of hot books. I mean, you've got authors, reviews, events, resources, discussions, all of that. Right. So, yeah. Um, the New York Times, I mean, again, so this, I've been publishing a bestsellers list for the last, since 1998. Yep. <laughs> and it's the only one that I'm aware of that has one run that long consistently and continuously. One of the things that I would like to see, however, is um, I would like to see that list embraced by authors and readers. And and publications in a way that mean? people. What do you mean by authors and readers? Like, what do you mean? Like, you know, what, so for example, we if if we look at um. You know, when when I get marketing material for a book, 
I will see, oh, it was a New York Times bestsellers, you know, bestseller. So you wanted Kurt, to say it's an AALBC bestseller. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because, all right. So no, I, the, the venerable New York Times is, you know, got a much larger footprint and collects data from a wide variety of sources, but they're not collecting them from AOBC. I used to contribute to the Times list, but it's not, but I don't, you know, because my little sales is not going to have a, make a dent on their list. However, what it does do is make people aware of books that are doing really well. So if you look at books like um, Claude Anderson's Powernomics, or anything written by Anthony Browder, or anything written by a wide variety of authors from, you know, John Henry Clark and Ivan, Ivan Van Sutterma, or even people like Jawanza Kanjufu. These are books that sell well in the Black community, but who, who's heard of them outside of, our, you know, like those in our community, the subset of those in our community who are aware, you know, they go to books, they know the websites to go to, they have their clubs and but I think some of these titles would do very well if they were exposed to a wide a wider audience. I can remember clearly the first time I um, you know read uh, Jawanta Kanjufu's books. You know, he's written a number of books on how they miseducate or don't educate black boys. And it resonated because I was sitting there witnessing it. You know, I'm uh, you know, I happen to go to a, a specialized school and so I kind of, but I didn't escape it because I know how they treat black boy, you know, like, again, my experience, I never had a black teacher in public school, full stop. Most of my teachers were, not to say that they were bad, but they were mostly Jewish women. And, you know, boys are more active and I was put in a corner because I was talking, but the reason I was talking because I already knew all the work. And how do you handle these kids? You know, how do, you know if you don't come, from, if you don't live in a community, you can't relate to them. You can't possibly educate them well, and so that's that is the challenge. So if now I'm selling books and I discover this book, and I'm like, what? If we knew this, maybe we. Maybe parents would do something differently. Maybe I would have done something differently. But so my motivation is to share information. You know, oh, we just weren't slaves. You know, it's like, oh, we were, we, we were behind what the Greek knew about history and mathematics. You know, Africans were. They didn't invent, you know, philosophy. It's just, again, it's just so much out there. It's just... So no, my, my motivation is to share this stuff. Um, and the bestsellers list, again, if if publishers even would say, all right, so this, these, this is a AOBC bestseller, there are books that would probably do far better. So publishers, we should even have a, some motivation because because it's in their self-interest to recognize the platforms that are supporting and selling their books. Um, to me, it's a no-brainer. Especially but, Black books. I would think that they would flock and just be over the moon um, uh, because uh, Black books sell, do not do they not? Clearly, clearly. I mean, you know, when I first started, interestingly, um, I would, you know, sit around twiddling my thumbs waiting for the next Black book to come out to add to my site. Now I can't keep up with them. I mean, it, it's just so many. It, it's so many. And... Um, and then, of course, this uh, self-publishing boom, or the independent publishing boom, is part of that. So now they're, you know, over a million books published a year. And they've come along. Self self-publishing, which used to be called vanity publishing, has come a long way. I mean, people are really putting out quality, yeah, books that rival big house kinds of things. Yeah, and you know, there are a lot of small presses that are producing quality work. Um, you know, I just sold a, a set of books to a book club, um, a press called Blue Nile Press out of Sacramento. Um, you know, he publishes um, a small number of books. They're all well-produced. And most interestingly, 
they, they use only black businesses to produce these books. So, you know, I print books through uh, Black Classic Press, um, you know, which is run by Paul Coates out of uh, Baltimore. I, I have a manuscript editing service. I have, uh, you know, obviously I promote and allow people to advertise their books on the site. That publisher uh, uses Black book designers, Black cover designers, uh, and they distribute their own books. So it's, but this is not something that we are, whole you know widely aware of um because this type of information you know just doesn't trend on twitter you know and and i think it's important because you know these are small businesses that have the potential to be so much more and they contribute to obviously they contribute to community a, another en entity that supports aobc um through sales and in fact they are a company that not only recognizes or acknowledges making our bestsellers list, they, in the print version of their book, put the AOBC bestseller seal on the book. Wow. You know, that's, that's, that's big, because few authors, few publishers do that. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that is the way to help, you know, raise all boats and raise um, recognition. And the stronger I am, the stronger advocate I can be for authors. So many authors benefit from the site because others who support me. So Blue Nile Press has bought ads and support ALBC. So that allows me to support authors who are doing good work that maybe don't have the wherewithal to purchase advertising. Uh, you know, so it's, it's important. All, all, all of it is important. So talk to me because we got about, I don't know, uh, about 10, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, right. Talk to me about the future. Do you think about the future of, 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 of your site, of publishing, of Black books in general, because you've been at this a very long time. You've seen the ebb and flow. You've seen the change. You've seen uh, more Black authors out there on the scene. You've seen the creativity of, of authors. You've seen um, authors um, uh, become rock stars like a Tayari Jones and, a, you know, and all these other folks um, uh, uh, who, who are... Um, you know, selling books out there. Sure. Um, what, what, do you, what do you see as the future? Where are we headed? So that's also a big question, right? It, 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 so the, the, there are a number of trends. One is the trend of the web, um, you know, coalescing and under the control of a handful of companies. That's, that's, a, that's a problem. Um, another trend more recently, however, is the support of indie businesses um, like an AOBC. There, I, I'm seeing that, that ebbs and flows, but there seems to be a more uh, concerted effort uh, from people to push against these massive corp, these handful of massive corporations that dominate everything. And not just on the web, just in general. I mean, whether it's Walmart or, or you know, in the physical world or Amazon or online, people are starting to push back against that. And they're gonna to need to, because you don't want a world in which the only thing that, only place you can buy something is from Amazon. So yeah. That's their that's their goal. Yeah, and they, world dominance. <laughs> no, I mean, that's their goal. And most things sold online are sold by Amazon. So they're, they're making progress toward that goal. And people are beginning to push back on that. And, and for good reason, because forget books for a second, I tell anybody who's listening right now, if you buy something on Amazon, search the rest of the web because it's very likely you'll find it cheaper. You know, it's just, but people have been, you know, they pay for the privilege to buy from Amazon. That's, you know, I wish That's I could- That's a good point. Get, I wish I could get people to just pay for just, look, you wanna buy from me, you have to pay me every month. Uh, and often pay a premium without realizing it, but we've been kind of, so that's one trend. We don't want to, uh, we don't want the world to be run by a handful of, you know, ultra powerful companies. No, we don't want the parable of the sour kind of vibe, right? Yeah. Cause that's, I, every time I see these big box, that's what I think of. That's what I think of every time I see a Amazon or a Walmart or any of yeah. these box expanding what they provide. It's, it's yeah. funny you mentioned that title. Um, it's, that became more popular in recent years. 
Uh, and in fact, the 20th anniversary edition was uh, published recently. But even before that was published, I was selling more of that book. And I actually book. read, huh? It's my favorite book. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think yeah. it, it resonates now. I mean, it's just, yeah. It's, it's, I, saw and, the, and read, I saw the play a few years ago, a couple of years ago, I saw the um, um, Tashi Reagan. Um, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, right. it's it's yeah. stunning. It's very stunning to, yeah. to see it, so. Okay, yeah. so that's that's one trendy, you know, we have to fight against that. Um, there's a lot of this, so you, was the question trends in books or trends in general? What? Yeah, publishing books, oh. and, and, and I'm gonna throw another one at you. So if Amazon, if Jeff Bezos calls you today, so you know what, let me make you an offer. What's the offer? A for AALBC. He wouldn't need to do that. I mean, so if if Jeff Bezos wanted to create the baddest black book site ever, he could hire anybody he wanted to, pay them whatever he needed to, and do it. He could. He wouldn't need, I mean, he could hire, could try to hire me, but if it's not me, it'll be some other person. He He could do that. The fact that he hasn't is perhaps telling. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, there's an opportunity there, but it's not going to be the kind of thing that's going to make you a boatload of money. And that's what Amazon's interested in doing. So one of the reasons why there is no other, say, corporate entity doing what I do is because they, I run lean. I'm in, I don't spend a ton of, I mean, Lately, I have been, but relatively speaking, I don't spend a ton of money. So if, say, company A wanted to do what I'm doing, you know how much they have a ton of overhead. They got to hire multiple bodies. So I do the web development. I do the front end. I do the back end, the database stuff. I do the ad sales. I do the editorial. I do the, a lot of the writing. I do the videography. I edit the video. I do a wide variety of things. I'm not great at any of them but I'm good enough. And if um, you try to get this done in some corporation, you know, you need, it just, it, it just, there's just too much overhead in a corporate environment to do what I do. Um, full stop. That's, that, that's the reason why it's not being done. I mean, it, so I don't have to worry so much about that. Um, what I do have to worry about is again, the consolidation of power and how it oppresses and pushes down in the entities. But the saving grace is I think over time, people will recognize the importance of having diversity and alternatives to the big corporations. Now, you know, so, at, you know, to, and to help you appreciate that, you know, 2019 was AOBC's best year. 2020, really? yeah, 2020, exceeded 2019. 2021 is looking great. And um, why? What, like, what is happening? Because of anti-racism and people's no, consciousness no, trend, around buying well, books from well, you? Part, you know, part of the reason, I mean, I mean, it would, you could, one could write a book on, on this. So in 2011, early 2011, my website traffic went like this. It fell off a cliff overnight because of Google. They made an algorithm change. It was a bad decision. It was poorly executed and it destroyed websites. It, sites like AOBC, independent black owned newspapers, uh, traffic just disappeared overnight. And many of those businesses never recovered. And it wasn't just black businesses. It was a wide variety of businesses. It was a popular, Google algorithm update. I think they called it Panda. Um, it took five years for my site to recover. Um, that is something I have no control over. Google could put me out of business tomorrow. Literally, they 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 have that kind of power. Now, again, I think they're um, uh, they they're a company that has a split personality. You know. Again, many of the people who work there want to do good things, but the leadership doesn't. 
you know, they want they want to dominate as well. Um, so what but, do you think about? So what do you think about when you do you? How do you think about expansion? How do you think about growing? How do you um, think about survival? Like yeah. not just survival, but thriving. Like how do you? Are you at break even? Like can you go to bed oh. at night and not be like, oh, you know? No, no. I mean, so yeah, I, <laughs> ALBC became my livelihood in 2008. In 2011, Google buried my website. I, and I started teaching, you know, I actually, as you know, a friend of mine gave me a job at the Queens Public Library teaching a GED course. And since then I've been teaching, uh, I've been an adjunct at Baruch. Uh, but- I went to um, grad school there. Okay, it's- Public administration. One of the gems of the, the CUNY system. Yeah. So um, I, um, <laughs> So, and that, that, that actually helped a great deal. So um, I also relocated from New York City to Florida. That's what I thought. Now, where are you? Are you in, where are you? Well, actually I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma right Cause, now. Yeah, cause, yes, because I was like, wait a minute. I remember you in New York, because that's how I know you. And right. then you moved. Right. And, then, and then when we talked the other day, you were like, oh yeah, and I'm on Central Time. And I'm thinking, well, that's not, where, yeah, where so, are you? Yeah, I, I took, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I actually came, I live, I'm, right now I'm in the heart of um, uh, what was previously known as Black Wall Street. And Which I'm is, in a great, how is that? It's interesting. It's, it's interesting. Um, that's why? a whole nother. Why is it, oh, okay, all right. I mean, it's you just You have to that, come back and tell me, because now I want to know why, because yeah, that they, seems very sort of metaphysical. Tulsa, yeah, it, you, Black. Uh. Right, so, you know, Throughout, scattered throughout Oklahoma with tons of black communities doing well, thriving. Yeah, um, and yeah, yeah. The, the one here was obliterated. I mean, the, the, the devastation, yeah, I mean, it was complete. It was complete. And it, I, don't, I don't see, you know, I, I, it's, 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 and it, it, but it's something that's been replicated, you know, throughout the country and it's, it's it's horrific. And, the, and speaking about literature and books, people, local Tulsans, up until recently were unaware of what happened. I mean, I knew about it in New York City because now, you know, I've been exposed to literature and books and this history, but local Tulsans, people who live right where it happened were unaware of it. And, wow. and, and because it was a deliberate effort to hide it and it was successful. So th this is why we need black owned newspapers to tell our stories, to record them. And otherwise you're being lied to. If you're gonna rely on the New York Times to cover our stories, you're gonna be lied to. And it's, it's unfortunate. And, you know, I don't, people need to understand, understand that. I mean, I'd subscribe to newspapers, you know, like, I haven't, I'm not subscribing right now, but I used to, in Tampa, subscribe to the Amsterdam News. Just, not that I read it every day, but just to support the paper. I mean, these, there is no daily Black-owned news, newspaper in the country today, none. Well, well, well there were two, but are they, I, I, I mean, I have a, you know, I run a Black-owned newspaper and we're part of the NNPA. Um, and uh, there, there were two, uh, one in- uh, Yeah, uh, I don't think yeah. there, there are any in print right now. Oh man, that pains me. So speaking of that, when I mentioned that history about the website traffic dropping off, I, you know, maybe you could put me in contact with someone from the NNPA because oh, absolutely. Their, their websites were in fact, their websites were impacted now. And they um, still have websites up because I pull for them. We don't have a website, uh, but I, 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 but because we are part of the, you know, we are member, it's a membership. Um, it's about 200 black newspapers still standing. Yeah, I have them on my site. Like if yeah. you go to the site and do a search on black owned newspapers, maybe even on a Google website, you'll see I maintain a list of those newspapers. So I maintain a, a list of those newspapers. And if I have links to the sites and, you know, I, I even have a couple of interviews from the people who run some of these papers. I think I did one recently with the Sacramento B. When I say recently, it's been a couple of years. But I talked yeah. to the brother that runs that newspaper. Yeah. Um, you know, Florida's got a couple. They got a few. handful. Yeah. 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 So they're they're there, and we need to support them. Um, 
you know, I, you know Chicago has a couple, you know, one or two. Um, yeah, I thought, Detroit, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Chicago did they lose their defender? How's oh. how they how they how's the defender doing? But the final call has been even more prominent, and they, yeah, we um. We got so, a lot of so work to do. We do have a lot of work to do. We have to preserve these things. That's why I still work at a black newspaper because I feel, I like you, feel very strongly that if we lose, uh, if we lose that tool, and it is a tool for our community, we lose a lot of the truth, and we lose a lot of the the things that that um, that um, make black culture black culture. You know, yeah. I feel no. very strongly about that so I, I you know I've, I've run away from it to make money and now the last 10 years or so I've been squarely rooted in this commitment to you know trying to trying to make sure that this black paper stays you know uh alive as best yeah. as we can you know I'm, I'm we're lean too so I get it um, right no I I could you know my last corporate job was at on Wall Street I you know I yeah I'm with you. My if, last if I, I was in New York and yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, I, could, I could be doing, you know, um, but I, I, I really enjoy what I do. I mean, I, I, I do too. I do yeah. too. So, yeah. so, so, so you believe that there's a future for you. Like you believe that for as long yeah, as it, you still have this love. It, it, may, it may be naive. It may be optimistic. It may, but yeah, I mean, this, this is what I, this is my retirement. This is what I'm doing. Um, I do know that there are challenges ahead. I do know technology. I have to continue to exploit that. You know, the website today looks nothing like it did in 19. The, nope, the technology is <laughs> yeah, so it has to continue to evolve, which means I have to continue to learn. Um, at some point, I'm not going to be around anymore. What's the future after that? That will be a challenge. Um, and do you groom people to take this over? Because I don't know if we are good in our communities about our legacy. Uh, and, I, yeah. and I've had these conversations with other black newspapers that were family driven. And I'm having these conversations with my, the, the, the man who owns my paper and publishes our paper. You know, like what, ha if you die, what happens? Like what right. happens, you right. know? So that needs to happen. There, there's a cost associated with that. In other words, where I'm gonna find another Troy, you know, yeah. where, I. Do you go to somebody's yeah. HBCU and like offer a mentorship or internship? Like what do you? <laughs> yeah, but who, I mean, mentorships or internships, like I have, of course. I work I work with Mega Evers College um, out of New York City and um, they provide interns graciously so, and, but they're not compensated financially. Yeah. And you know, if you're living in New York, you can't do this. Many of us don't have the luxury of no, no. working. I mean, that's for how I went to Essence. I went to Essence for free a hundred yeah. years ago. That's how I got hired. I went there and I worked for them for free. And then I worked for Terry for free. And then she, I got hired. Oh. I, I don't think young people can do that now. I, you, you can't. No, no I way. Mean, it's, it's a whole nother <laughs> world. You know, my, my parent, our parents' generation could go to CUNY for free. Um, our kids' generation have to take on debt yeah and you know our and, parents and generation massive. yeah you know you could one person could work the father could work with her and the mother could stay home and people could have a comfortable lifestyle now everybody's got to work Everybody. you know the, <laughs> the parents the kids and not just one job <laughs> yeah really i mean that's that's that's, that's a real. Big, big deal yes and so that that even affects our ability to have time to read reading is a luxury you want to buy a hardcover book and have the time to read it. You got to have the money, the time. Yeah. If you're poorly educated, you may not be able to consume the book. It, it just, yeah. it all, it, it's all tied together. So I want you to come back and talk to me some oh, more. Because right. it's just not enough time. No, really, it's just not yeah. enough time. And you know, I have a girlfriend who launched a, a, a lit fest here in New Haven, the Elm City Lit Fest. That's how I started tracking you down. Uh, last year because I wanted you to be a part of this lit fest um, oh, but okay. I did and so it was hard to find you but when I when you finally like yeah, yeah open the door it's... and let me in I was like okay I'm never I'm never <laughs> losing sight of you again yeah yes I'm locked in so I'm gonna, <laughs> give, I'm gonna give her information to you because she launched a very successful lit fest here in New Haven we never okay. had a lit fest so 
uh, in a city that sits between Yale and several other schools, uh, sure. we just not had a black book festival like this. Right. And, uh, and so this is her passion. So I want to connect you to because I think um, she would love to have you on her platform. Uh, okay, and she had great. some real heavy hitters, people that you know in the publishing world uh, sure. participate. And we had to do it virtually because of COVID. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. So I'm going to connect you to her so that, uh, so that you can stay connected um, to us. But, yeah, but I want I you to come back, um, Troy, because I think right. this is a much larger conversation and there's more to talk about. Sure. If you I have appreciate time. it. I know, you, I I know you're working, but if you have yeah. time. All right. Great. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've you're enjoyed welcome. this, really. Good, yeah. good. And again, if you if you archive this on the web, be sure to send me a link. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it becomes a podcast after the fact. So it's, it's archived up to um, SoundCloud and uh, iTunes. And I'll make sure I tag you and I'll make sure I send it to you and I'll email. It, it will have it. Harry, my producer, is uh, like, you know. All right. So yeah, I see his guy. picture down there. All right. So he'll, we'll, we'll have it all wrapped up and ready for you. All right, great. <laughs> Thank all you right. so much, Troy. Right, Thank so you. I so enjoyed this. Take good right. care. I'll talk to you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>